Okay, so we've looked at uh, different types of aneurysms. We looked at risk factors for aneurysm formation. I'm now going to review some angiographic anatomy at a variety of levels. So starting very simply, uh, these are angiographic views of the anterior circulation. This is an internal carotid artery injection. Uh, the left to our left is an AP, what we call an AP view. This is sort of a not actually a coronal view. This is a little bit of a coronal plus axial view. And to the right, we have uh, a lateral view of the internal injection. And you can see I've lineated what is the internal carotid, the MCA and the ACA. You can see the bifurcation on the AP view a lot better than the lateral view, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, uh, any questions? Oh, thank you. Just move on. Uh, so here's a view of the poster circulation. This is a vertebral injection from the right vertebral artery. You can see I've labeled the pica, um, actually the anterior spinal artery in the middle, uh, the basilar artery, and then the relevant branches of the basilar artery, the AICA, the SCA, and the PCA as well, both in a, this is a more transfacial view. So this is a lot more like a coronal view on the left and to the right is a lateral view. Again, you can see the vertebral, the pica branch, the ASA, the anterior spinal artery, the basilar, the AICA, the SCA, and the PCA. So getting into a little bit more of the weeds of the anatomy for the ICA. So here I've lineated the ICA segments according to the Boutillier classification. This is a 1997 paper that I think has significant relevance to neurosurgeons. I think it's, the, it's probably the best and most reproducible anatomic description. So from uh, proximal to distal, you can see I've labeled the Petrus segment. And I always say, I sort of talk about this up across up uh, that defines what is both the Petrus segment and then the cavernous segment has initially a superior course, an anterior course, and then a superior course as well, akin to the Petrus segment. So those are the two truly extradural segments that are intracranial of the carotid artery. So if you have an aneurysm of those segments, it generally cannot cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. It can cause problems due to mass effects, but these are not locations where you can have a bleed from. Now, distal to the cavernous segment is the easy to understand, but not frequently or appropriately frequently described clinoidal segment that lies between the two dural rings. Small aneurysms in this location are still functionally extradural, meaning they can't cause intracranial hemorrhage. You then have the ophthalmic segment that goes from the ophthalmic artery to the posterior communicating artery. It's from this that you can have intradural aneurysms that can cause subarachnoid hemorrhage, although with the exception of the blister variant aneurysms, these tend to be the lowest risk aneurysms in the head. You then have the communicating segment that goes from the PCOM up to the ICA terminus, and it starts at the PCOM. You can see this, I use this uh, angiogram because there's a very large PCOM and PCA that are lineated. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.